All right. Here is my 1990-ish 550 stand-up jet ski. And it's got a problem. It doesn't really start. So here is what happens. You're on the stand or on the trailer here. A little bit of cranking, and it'll start. Cool. Uh, after it sits for too long, a little bit of cranking, and it doesn't start. A little more cranking, and the battery is dead. Charge it. A little more cranking, and it fires right up. You take it to the water. Still in the trailer, mind you. It fires up. Pull it off the trailer. You ride it around for a while. Turn it off. Well in the water now. Go just turn it back on. Start to rotate a couple of times. Battery dies. If you lift the rear of the jet ski out of the water so the pump isn't in the water, and then try to start it, it'll feel like it's got a dead battery, but it'll fire up and start, and you can go ride it around all day long again. But if you turn it off and want to start it back in the water, the battery's going to die. Obviously, it needs a new battery. However, that is not the case. This is a brand new battery. What is happening is the starter is just robbing all of the power out of the battery, and it just doesn't have enough energy left over to turn the motor and fire up the ignition system to get the jet ski running. When you take the rear out of the water, it no longer has that extra little strain on the motor, or the starter, and it'll start. When you try to start it, the, the voltage is like 5 to 8 volts on the battery. It's just ridiculous. The, star the starter is toast. So let's go order a starter and put it in. Well, it looks like the starter has arrived, and we have some kind of unboxing video contest on this thing, so... Hey, didn't you want to try? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Aiden. There it is. All right, guys, go vote for me. Oh. Oh, what is that? A jet ski. It's a jet ski. What? You want help? Yeah. There it is. Open that. You want to open that? Yeah, feels like a starter. Uh, there is the starter. Um, when you're shopping for starters, you're going to notice pretty much all of them don't have this little tab on the back. They're only held in by these front little mounting bolts, which I'm sure is fine. It probably holds it on okay. Um, I bought this one, and I think it was a good idea. Let me explain why. Here is how you ride a sit-down jet ski. And here's how you ride a stand-up. All of that bouncing around and jumping and everything you do want to stand up, I think that little rear mounting tab is pretty important. If you think about it, if you only hold it by these two front uh, bolts here, there's not much, well, there's no support in the rear. However, you bolt it down, you can jargle this thing around all you want, and it's not going to snap off these little ears. That's why I went with the SBT. Now, most people would say pony up the money and buy an actual uh, Kawasaki starter if you're worried about it. The problem is they're not available anymore. The only option you have to get a new Kawasaki starter is hopefully find a new old stock one on eBay that somebody has sitting around on the shelf for years. Which, I don't want to sit around and wait for one, I want to ride my jet ski this year. So, I needed a new starter. However, there was the option of rebuilding the, uh, the old one, installing new uh, brushes. But if there's a problem with the winding, new brushes aren't really going to solve anything. Alright, down inside of here, you can get to the starter bolts. I'm not really going to be showing how I do this, because uh, you're never going to see anything more than, more than this. So, just know that, maybe I can get you a picture. Ah, you can kind of see it now. Here is one starter bolt right there, and the other one is right down below it. The rear little mounting bolt, that's going to be a nightmare to get to. 
Actually, I don't really know if it's going to be that hard. It feels like a 10. Well, it also feels like there's two of them on there. There's got to be two of them on there. Well, that's going to be fun. All right, let's, uh, let's get out of there. All right, first update. I removed this tube off a little cylinder head here. And the way to get to the starter, the reason I had to do that was to get my pry bar in there. The reason I had to do that was because I used one of these little speedy wrench things. At a glance, you're like, wow, that is the wrench to use. Finally, I have a use for one of these things. Well, my friend, do not use that. I'm trying to get that rear starter bolt out. Uh, what happens, I'll give you a little mock-up here. You basically have a little crevice as you use the wrench. This is a bad angle. You're turning the wrench. Everything's fine and hunky-dory. Keep pulling the bolt out. Bam, you hit a wall. The wall being the lower motor mount there where the entire base of the ski kind of rides up. Now your wrench is stuck. You can't get it out and you can't get it back in. You were royally screwed. Luckily, I caught it before I went too far because I tried to take the wrench off to kind of adjust from bending over. And uh, turns out I was able to get a pry bar in there, force this thing down and off the bolt. So the bolt was then wedged in there sideways like that. Just enough to get a little tiny wrench in there and turn the screw back in one little turn at a time. I've been tightening this thing for an hour now. The screw is almost in, got the wrench back out, got the wrench off, and then removed the bolt again. Freaking nightmare. Don't use this stupid thing back there. All right, old starter is out. New starter is ready to go in. Now, usually when you get an aftermarket starter, usually they weigh a lot less. On, on these, they, they feel quite equal, if not the new one being a little heavier. So that's that's kind of a nice, nice, uh, nice change there. Um, diameter looks like, yeah, looks like this one might be a hair smaller or the same. Yeah, it's a hair smaller. But hey, it weighs the same, so. Yeah, that weight is nice. Nice uh, nice comfort, if you will. All right, let's uh, put this in, see if it starts. Got the new O-ring here. I just dropped out of the bag. Ah, go me. Got some Evernerd grease. Evernerd Triple Guard Marine grease. Gonna use that to grease up the gasket. Hopefully it'll hold it on there for me. That gasket o-ring, you know what I meant. Maybe I'll just put it in the starter itself. Make life easy. Alright, new starter is in its new little hole. Gonna connect the battery cable. Before I, uh... In. I don't want to have to fight getting to this thing too. Fought this thing enough today. Alright, starter is in and installed. I was a little worried about the rear mounting bolt not lining up right. Tightened the front down, pulled it in where it's supposed to be, and then the back screw slid right in. Luckily I've had plenty of experience putting in that bottom back screw, so that really wasn't an issue. Original starter, used two screws back there. New one only used one, the lower one. Not a big deal, but now I have a random screw I don't want to throw away or lose in case I ever uh, rebuild that starter. So, you know, I'll just, maybe I'll just put the whole thing in a bag and throw it in the shelf to forget about it and then throw it away in a few years. It's usually how it goes. But, before I put the battery in, I wasn't quite happy with how the lawnmower battery was sitting in there, so I picked up some of these little mini ratcheting straps. I'm going to make up a little battery strap down system for it, and then we'll see how it goes. All right, I got the little ratcheting end screwed into this little bracket that I bent up and put in there. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it works. I like my little battery upgrade here. Holds it in pretty well. And some people, it may look dumb, and I agree. But at the same time, when do you see little tiny mini strapping things? Uh, I didn't get carried away with it just enough to keep the battery taunt, give it a little bit of flex. It should be fine. We'll, we'll see how a couple of rides go. 
Well, new starter is in, battery is charged and hooked up. Uh, yeah, well, let's see what happens. Hey, I say we're ready for water test again. Now, for the record, it's never started that well before. You turn it off right back on, that is the only time it's done that. It's never, ever started that easily. Uh, battery cables also is not warm at all. It is not as cold as the engine here is. No, colder, because the engine was just on. Anyway, before, you couldn't touch these. They were, they were, they were burning hot. Now, terminals, negative wire, positive wire, Cool to the touch still. Granted, there wasn't much turning there. So far, so good. All right, first start in the water. Let's see how this new starter makes it work. If the new starter makes it work. Hey, pretty good so far. saving device yeah I don't know if I was drowning I'd hang on to it jet ski is warmed up it has been ridden this is the point where it wouldn't start before so if it starts now I think we fix the problem hey, hey good enough huh Well, starter's obviously working just fine. I don't think I've ever actually run into a situation before where the starter causes a no ignition problem, but hey, never know. Alright everybody, see you next time.